readers, I'm so excited. We have been in this nonfiction reading unit and we have been thinking deeply about how we, how we write, how we read. Um, can I get toggled over, Linda, to the slide deck? The Structure Mini Lessons, thank you. Okay, so we're gonna watch this short little video clip, video clip about structure and how words and stories and sentences. It's really the biggest model we have built ever. So that's really the biggest challenge because you have to cut into many parts and really find out how to connect it together. Hmm. You have to cut it into many parts and you have to really find out. So that next slide, Linda, if you, I'm sorry to do this from over there and usually I would obviously have my equipment here and go <laughs> through there. Um, Structure of a text really matters. So we have an article here today called The Lego Artist, How Stuart Harris Builds Towering Masterpieces Out of Legos. So when I'm thinking about how text is gonna go, I have to think about how words are built, how sentences are built, and really how entire texts are built, right? The author of this book, this article, will you fast forward, Linda, sorry. Um, if I could write her and, and like ask her a couple of questions, this is the writer, this is Jeanette, she's the author of this. So how do you group and categorize the information? Like I wanna know from her, how did she decide how the text was gonna go? When she writes her articles and her books, how does she decide which sections are gonna fit together? And how does she plan out her headings and subheadings? When she writes an article, what is it that she hopes the reader's gonna gain? If I could call her up, those would be my wonderings about how she was gonna make this go. So here's the thing, readers. When we are reading a text, if we, we kind of have these like, hold space holders in our brain and we call these mental models so when we were reading fiction this year you would make these mental images of the pictures in your mind of how the text was going but when we're reading nonfiction text instead of maybe pictures mental pictures we really have these things called mental models it's how we hold on to what we're learning and what we're reading so I'm gonna pass this text to you so we can do this as a shared reading experience if you'll just take one and pass it back so everybody's got a copy and I'm gonna show you readers how my brain, and by the way, we all have different kinds of brains and our models <coughs> may look a little different from each other. So I want you to think for a minute, this this first section. If you'll track with me, we're gonna read along and we're going to think about how's this text, this section of the article going, right? How's the text gonna go? And as we read, I want you to think about what mental image is coming to my mind. Maybe not mental images from the text, but like if I had to draw a graphic organizer to represent how I was holding on to the information, how would I do it? Okay, you guys ready to track with me? All right, here we go. The tree of creativity stands more than 15 meters or 49 feet tall. Its branches hold a train station, an airport, and a scene from outer space. This tree does not grow in the ground. It's a sculpture made entirely from Lego bricks. Stuart Harris designed this enormous tree. He works at the Lego House, a Lego play space and museum that opened in Billund, Denmark. Billund, Denmark. This past fall, visitors to Lego House can marvel at the Lego sculptures, from giant dinosaurs to colorful waterfalls. It's up to Harris to make and create a reality. All right, so I was reading that, and, and I want you to watch me as I think about how I was holding on to that. So when I, was, when I was reading through it, it was very descriptive. Like I imagined I was there where that Lego tree is built and I saw it on the front of the, um, the uh, article. But because it was really descriptive, my mental model for descriptive text, when it's really kind of giving me descriptive details, my mental model looks something like this. This is called boxes and bullets. So I think about what that kind of big main idea is in this section, and it's really all about the Lego house, right? So this is all about the Lego house, right? And what are some details that we got from it? Can somebody share a detail that, that, that get, it gives us about the Lego house? Yes, ma'am. 15 meters tall. Okay, so it gives us its height, 15 meters tall. Anything else that we discovered about it? It has a train station. There's a train station and some other things too. Weren't there some other things? Scene from outer space. Ooh, scene from outer space. Anything else? Denmark. Ah, it's location. It tells us it's in Denmark. And so these are some details. And in a way, this is called boxes and bullets. So the main idea is really all about the back, the, the Lego house, and these are my details. That section went that way. It was designed in a kind of a boxes and bullets format. You might also think of it as like main idea and details, right?
but you know, the whole article's not gonna go that way. That's the mental model that I held on to when I was reading that section. But readers, sometimes when we get into more complex nonfiction texts, the next section may go a different way, and the next section may go a different way. And so we've been looking at how informational writers can kind of rehearse by trying on different patterns. You're gonna be doing this as a writer later this morning, but I want you to think about the author today. We see a section here of boxes and bullets. That's how that first section of text went. In a minute, you're gonna try it out. I want you to get with a partner, and you're gonna read this next section called Lego Life, this, this piece right here with a partner. And as you read, I want you to think about what's your mental model. Here are a few regular ones. Sometimes text structures come in cause and effect or problem and solution. Sometimes it's a compare and contrast, or they're comparing one thing to something else. Sometimes it's a pros and a cons, and this list is not exhaustive, boys and girls. Sometimes writers come up with new ones, hybrid text structures that are super cool. And your job is to read with a partner, and then I want you to take a sticky note, you and your partner, and I want you each to think about what's the graphic organizer in my mind? What's the mental model that I'm holding on to in this section called Lego Life? Can somebody tell me really quickly what your task is with, par with your partner? Who can tell me what you're gonna be doing with your partner in just a moment? Yes, ma'am. You'll be describing your mental model after you read. So you're gonna read this section called Lego Life, and then you're gonna talk about what your mental model is, and maybe even sketch it out. Maybe there's a, if, if, you, if you have time. So take about, oh, two and a half, three minutes to read the text and sketch with a partner. All right, jump right in, please. <laughs> If you want to read it together out loud, you may, or just read it in the, your head. If you're reading the book. Sure. to kind of go, this is the way I think the text is going. Um, I think it kind of went this way, and here was my mental model. Can somebody share with me real quick? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Um, we chose, we kind of thought maybe cause and effect and problem and solution. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit um, more about that? Yes. Um, in the beginning, it said that he loves toys. He had a passion for toys, and so that was kind of his problem, figuring out what he can do with that, and the solution was finding his career. Okay, very interesting. Did anybody choose a different text structure, perhaps? Let's hear from you. Go for it. We kind of went on our own and did a, like a chronological sequence. Oh, okay. So notice the sequence isn't necessarily one of them here, but that's one we've been learning since we were young le readers, right? Sometimes like a procedural text will kind of go first, next, after that. Is that what you kind of decided? We did. We did kid, college, and adult. So our mental models can change depending on the type of reader that we are. There's no right answer to it, but there are some common text structures. And as nonfiction readers, we have to start to pay attention to those because here's the deal, guys. Those mental models are what help us hold on to what we read. When we have to come back later and summarize the text, or we have to come back later and make more meaning from it, 
that mental model helps me hold on to it. And, and the thing is, with stories, when we were learning about fiction texts, they all kind of go the same way, right? The plot mountain, we go up and down, and it's the same in every story. But in nonfiction, there's so many different ways that the text can go, which is really cool, because as writers, we get to choose so many different ways. But as readers, when we begin to pay attention to how the text is going to go, we can hold on to more of what we're trying to read and understand. So today, when you're out at Reader's Workshop, I want you to be thinking about your informational text. Many of you have different books that you've checked out from the library in your bucket. You also have that wonderful resource we learned about called TextQuest, and you are diving into nonfiction text. Many days here in your workshop, I allow you to come to the carpet with any text that you choose. But today is one of those days where we're really going to have to make sure we're an informational text because informational text is where we're going to see these structures, right? So when you head off today, you have two tasks, okay? Your first task is to finish this amazing article, right? Don't you want to know more about this fella? Don't you want to know more about this amazing text structure? So we're going to finish reading brick by brick. And in this way, I want to kind of see what you can do on your own. You and a partner, we're kind of working together. But when you try something out on your own, it gives me insight into the kind of learning that you have going on, the thinking you're doing. So you're going to head off to independent reading time, and you're going to take a sticky note, and you're going to do your own mental model for this section called Brick by Brick. But as soon as you have that done, because that's fast, that won't take long, I want you to then dive right into your chosen Good Fit books your informational text. You've got some in your bucket and you can check out the ones on um, TextQuest if there's an article that you're interested in reading. But here's your task. While you're in, the, in your independent reading, your job is to think about how's this text gonna go? And how is that helping me hold on to more of what I'm learning and reading? All right, so think about that information and ask yourself, what's the overall structure? Because here's the real challenge that the, when we come back for sharing. I'm gonna ask you guys to think about if this section was kind of main ideas and details, and this section was cause and effect or sequence, and this section, what would you say is the structure of the whole thing? So we think about sections and how those texts are going to go. I have one other challenge for you before you head off. See my word I'm wearing today? What's this word? Does anyone see the one right in the middle there? Construct. construct. What is construct? This is a word sandwich, so construct means to build or to assemble. In this story, or this, in this informational piece, it's really not a story, I shouldn't have called it that, but in this informational text, um, they construct this amazing Lego model. And we know, um, she's over there, Can, Linda, would you toggle back to the structure mini lesson for me real quick? Um, that last slide there. We know that we are working on word parts as well. So we know that the base word of this is struct. So this is like a Latin root. We are collecting and learning so many of these this year. The base word is struct. Look at all the words that we can learn just from this one little base piece called struct. It means to build structure, construction, de destructive, and instructor. As you're coming across your words and your stories, the <coughs> text that you're reading, I want you to be looking for that, all right? Okay, it's time for you to head off. Off you go, readers and writers.